I could graft six cadaver arms onto my pal Alan, but that wouldn't make him an octopus. That's the kind of sentence in a review you have to read twice and then slowly begin to wonder if you've gone insane. The girls on the bus was set up for success. It had everything the critics loved like bigotry. They are racist because everyone is racist. At least they're honest about it. Degeneracy. And successful women living their best lives. I could lose my job. I'm married. On the verge of divorce. Ah! It couldn't have been more custom made for critical success. And yet, even they don't like it. The few of them that could be bothered to review it anyway. It doesn't even have an audience score. This released yesterday. Women help women. I wasn't sure you identified as a woman. And when you watch it, it's not hard to understand why. I mean, it starts like this. But as any political journalist could tell you, the truth is whatever you want to believe. And while it is an accurate summary of how journalists see the world, it's still a horrific statement. Especially when you follow it up with the next clip. So here's my truth. Oh, it's my truth. Reality doesn't exist. It's whatever I tell you it is. And while this may be a brain-melting series, something which makes even the Hollywood Reporter roll their eyes, the critics really want to love it. It just doesn't have the heft to take on complex issues. But they wish it did. I would hate to misgender. That might have been the wisest thing that I've ever heard you say. They would actually love it to be a smart show about reporting, but this isn't it. How could I forget? Could y'all imagine if I had forgotten my best little friend? Ah! And their biggest issue is it just isn't political enough, which is weird when you watch the show. Because for a start, it's full of it. Politics is not just for boomers. Y'all want to defund the police and finally stand up to the gun lobby? It's one-sided. Be good. Don't get pregnant. Abortions are now illegal pretty much everywhere. And it is so on the nose. Some of the scenes in the first episode are like getting a door slammed in your face. Your network's words are literally violent. Words are not violent. Get out of here! For instance, take how this reporter acts when somebody picks her up on, I don't know how you could work for those bigots. They are racist because everyone is racist. At least they're honest about it. So it's weird then, with stuff like that, all the critics are moaning, it doesn't have enough of that in it. It's better than condescending Democrats trying to tell me that I'm a victim and only they know what's best for me. What it seems like they wanted this show to be was just an absolute 100% full bore hate campaign. It's a soapy show that feels like it just happens to take place on the campaign trail. Feels like a missed opportunity. I'm sitting here thinking, I can't believe you put that in the show. And they're like, yeah, but it doesn't go far enough though, does it? It seems like all they really want to be happy is the delusions in their own face to actually be presented onto the screen. Screen. Whereas this show does actually try and be entertaining. It's like getting banged in the city for a modern audience. Candidate I work for is a sexual deviant who's- Because this show takes modern ideas and turns it up to 200 in parts. There's an entire character who is supposedly on the campaign trail for TikTok. Making herself a discount code while promoting the socialist candidate? It's fine. Hypocrisy. And she is like the most extreme zoomer to have ever zoomed, while at the same time being, hello fellow kids, this is what we believe nowadays, isn't it? No vegan options. Good thing I always roll with a backup. I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> it has a middling script, bluntly written as an understatement. I saw your TikTok. The way you broke down the Green New Deal, that was super dope. The characters are broadly archetypal, except they're Californian archetypes, which makes them all deranged lunatics. <laughs> And the social messaging, incredibly on the nose. Well, and I remember when teenagers didn't become household names for surviving a mass shooting. This is from a review that liked it. I could have said that first sentence. They only think it recovered because there's something earnest about its intentions. Yes, yeah, she likes that it's a bigoted car crash, but you know, at least they're trying to attack the people I don't like. The Girls on the Bus has nothing to say about the real world, abdicating any attempt at actual insight of politics or media. But like, it could have been good if only it projected the worldview of an average Twitch streamer. Is it the prime? Primary, just a higher stakes version of The Bachelor. It has a compelling cast, but fails to present an opinion about political topics. There's a theme here, by the way. A little bit. I think one of the things they're complaining about is it, there is no guy who's orange in it. In fact, there's a clip where the main actress actually likes one of the candidates. Let's call him the, the hot white guy. So no doubt that didn't really appeal to this critical audience. Little known Kansas mayor could actually be The Bachelor. Although to say it has no opinion about it at all would be entirely wrong because she also makes one of the most ridiculous statements I've ever heard about an interview of this sort. Her eyes never leaving mine, the familiar shiver down my spine. I remember what it felt like to fall in love. Although that may backfire later in the episode. <laughs> Candidate I work for is a sexual deviant. No, it's actually not that this show fails to make any opinions about what it's saying. What I think their problem is 
is it doesn't go far enough into real world ideas like they want it to. Yes, the entire show is very Californian. It definitely takes a side. It's just still not enough for them, even as it's punching them in the face with the opinions that they want. Force us to risk everything to save our fragile democracy. I was generally amused and irritated all at once. Uh, welcome to my world. That's basically anything I watch for this channel. <laughs> From CNN, the last thing journalism needs is something putting a spotlight on the profession's principles before backing over them. It doesn't paint journalists in a good light. But then again, it is based on a true story, so, you know, what did they expect? There are limits to how much the audience can suspend their disbelief when watching a TV show. We'll be making a living wage on our wind farm, so we're not gonna have to win the next round of Squid Game just to buy Dad a new kidney. The further the girls on the bus get into its storylines, the more likeable the central characters become. I've only seen episode one, and I find them all insufferable. It has an idealistic approach because people from all sides get on the same bus and work together. They're even friends. It's very idealistic that. It's just a missed opportunity that doesn't go far enough. Go f yourself. Is that clear? I, I hope it is. That's what I think they mean when they say it's an awkwardly glossy look at the US campaign trail in the modern era. Despite putting in digs at all the people they despise, I think their problem is it still treats them like human beings, rather than taking them out back. Green New Deal is not just gonna save our planet from all the sh that we have done to it. Straws. Also, I'm only vaguely aware of anything to do with this, like, I have no idea who that guy is. The hot white guy. I didn't see any of this being inspired by Joe. The geriatric, the ultimate elder statesman. Or Alex at all. Seem accessible to the everyman, or as she'd say, every person. And if you want to see the kind of atomic bomb that these reviews fall into, well, we get a whole quick summary of the different characters, you know, there's a old school objective reporter. One whose right to his beliefs is tested by a cable outlet. God damn, what more do these people want from me? That's right, baby, let it out. A hard bitten scoop master and the youth Lola, an independent left voice who broadcasts via social media and has next to no idea how any of this journalism stuff works. So you know how we're always hearing how we have to balance our budget? No, we don't. If it's hard to buy these reporters could get along with themselves, let alone each other, then it's harder still to take this world seriously where, and then they just go into a literal diatribe of a load of weird lunatic things they've got on their own face with regards to the real world. That's their problem. Yeah, but why didn't you talk about what I want to know? It's because it's a fantasy, love. It doesn't actually exist. Determining the worst offender is a competition worthy of a primary. Is it the way the show repackages Kimberlyn's views into a version of modern extremism? What? I would hate to misgender. That might have been the wisest thing that I've ever heard you say. Vague enough to make her palatable, as a quasi femme figure. Are you all right there, mate? Do you need to be put in a white padded cell for your own protection? Sounds like you're coming up with these weird dangerous theories everyone keeps talking about. Is it the way the writers keep checking boxes? Uh, there are a lot of checking boxes in this show. Look, she's every category they could possibly cram into one character. Although let's face it, that's also pretty common for TikTok. Rather than figuring out how to convincingly write a modern day 20 something without condescending to it. Have you seen the 20 somethings on TikTok? That is a convincing version of them. Are you even a reporter? According to the cut, I am the eyes and ears of my entire generation. Not even the dead can escape the vacuity of the show's writing, which sends buzzwords, dumb quips, clunky, not exactly current references, embarrassing peons to the power of journalism. <laughs> that is embarrassing. They don't have any power. And musty work-life balance issues into the void is, uh, work-life balance issues, where the main character just kind of bangs everything in sight. At some point, it was like watching Shield. I expected to get offered half a bag of chips. Bag of big wood, drip, make a logo, ah. sag Except it turns out she was cheaper than that. <laughs> Benoist bears the brunt of the damage and faces it by overacting and gesticulating like she's in a zany rom-com. To be fair, that's just how she acts. <laughs> Did you not watch Supergirl? <laughs> Goodness gracious, pants. 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 No, I don't blame you. I think I was the only one that did. Get her back here right now so I can loof her to death. Attempts to shape the material into something entertaining only undermines the occasional passages of despairing for our democracy. There is a lot of that. I mean, there was a lot of that in the trailer. But in the first episode, they can't shut up about it. Our democracy is dead! Which is weird, considering they're journalists, so have nothing to do with it. They like to dole out assurances 
that journalists are bold hero protectors at heart. Now remember, this is supposed to be based on a true story. You can understand why it's difficult to take the show seriously. Although then again, I think it's meant to be part comedy, so it fits. It feels like it's 1996, not 2024, and it's difficult to stomach recent history seen through such a glib, glossy filter. Kind of feels like the author thinks they went through NARM, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't believe you want to go all the way back to 1996. <laughs> Do you not understand what I've been through? The horror of the 2020. <laughs> so, what do you think? I think it's a beautiful lie. I tell you, that's the kind of person who thinks you have PTSD because their pizza delivery was late. The girls on the bus, should we stream it or skip it? If you don't say skip it, you're lying to people. The show comes off as niche and wonky. We're gonna put the Y on all the end of your adjectives. What all they've done is added salacious elements to make it more interesting. That would explain this scene. Grace is being pulled off by family. Maybe that's in episode three. I've not seen that specifically. Lola is hard crushing on a socialist candidate and has to fight the dirty looks from traditional journalists. Yeah, them not taking her seriously is the real problem with that sentence. Save your future by creating a green economy and bridge the wealth gap. This is Grey's Anatomy on the campaign trail. Now you may understand why I considered watching this to be a living hell. That's why we have to see Lola packing her um individual pleasure device. <laughs> On suggestion from one of her followers during a live feed. I told you it was like your average Twitch streamer. This is why Sadie has to encounter someone she's banged with in the first 10 minutes. To be fair, from the impression that we got in this show, as she travels the world, it would be difficult to find somebody that she hasn't banged. That's actually the greater challenge. The girls on the bus fails to make politics fun again. What do you mean? Again. There's a reason why most people ignore this stuff most of the time. Max wants this to be a frothy workplace comedy about female empowerment. I mean, if you wanted that, you should have dropped him in a forest and told them to try and survive. Fine. That would have been a laugh a minute. It wants to be escapist fluff, but the problem is, it's set in the least escapist environment possible in 2024. Seriously, it does seem like a lot of these reviews are just written by very, very bitter people. There's like this aura of dark dread that hovers over the reviews. Well, it is an adaptation of a real life book. A factual adaptation of the book would likely be a horror movie. So instead, they made an alternate universe that's stranded between pure fabulism and obvious inspiration. What on earth is fabulism? Sweetie darling, sweetie darling. You don't mind me calling it that, do you sweetie? Okay, darling? It's similar to magical realism. Well, I suppose that sorts that out. But the girls on the bus has nothing to say about the real world. Wait, hang on, you were complaining. You can't go, it has nothing to say about the real world when you've gone, oh my God, I can't escape. It's about the real world. Well, it actually isn't. Abdicating any attempt to have any actual insight. One of the candidates is a celebrity whose media savvy and charm make up for his lack of experience. That last contender comes uncomfortably close to invoking the man who won in 2016. The action star. 46% of Americans would vote for him regardless of party affiliation. I really wish they would review the TV show rather than just telling us all their feelings of inadequacy from over the years. But the girls on the bus barely makes a mention of its in-universe incumbent, a conspicuous absence that grows stranger with each passing stump speech. This Trump-shaped plot hole, which they've just admitted that they've made up in their own tiny little minds, struggles to square its subject matter with a sunny disposition. It doesn't exist. You've just admitted it doesn't exist. Kimberlyn's beliefs are treated as little more than a polite disagreement with her peers to be overcome by the power of friendship. You see what I mean? When they all complain that it doesn't go far enough, it is literally things like, I can't believe that you think something different than me, and yet we're not stringing you up outside. <laughs> it is unbelievable to them that they could actually have a civil conversation with somebody. They probably would have loved it if they'd been kicking her out of the hotel or the bus while it was driving along the road. We may have started as competitors, but we ended as family. Yeah, that's what they're mad about. This arc is made possible only by keeping her beliefs as unspecific as possible. So obviously, if she actually said any kind of beliefs that disagreed with the other people, they definitely couldn't have remained friends. Being a bit too honest there, Variety, aren't you? With what you think, personally. They keep her beliefs obscure 
lest they burst the show's fictional bubble. I mean, come on! There are offhand references to cat hats. I've, I've not seen that one yet. But neither of these things took place in this timeline. It's a fictional universe, you demented bint. How many times does it need to be repeated before you can get it through your skull? You stupid woman with your weird child! The girls on the bus even gives Walker a cartoonishly sexist heckler she can dunk on before literally burning her chest prison, which naturally her earns her a bump in the polls. Sadie rails against bigoted double standards applied to female reporters, including the media trope that they bang sources. Except they do bang their sources. Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work. So her speechifying falls on deaf ears. So the problem that you have is that it's authentic. <laughs> hey, you're the one saying it's not close enough to reality and then complaining when it is. Lola makes no sense to begin with. Well, I mean, yes, but again, that's just accurate for a TikToker. And only gets more insulting as a stereotype over time. Yes, but the way she acts in the show is how I see your review. I mean, if anything, you're just proving a correct. She shows up in a bikini because she thinks the press pool is an actual pool. Again, have you talked? to many Zoomers. MMT, she's not telling you to meet me there. Modern monetary theory. What's meant to be a delightful romp just comes across as pure delusion. On honestly, after reading your rant, I think you're projecting. This show is smart about a lot of things. I've seen it. I don't believe you. Dumb about others. Everything. Uh, but not disproportionately. Yes, it's 100% proportionally dumb about things. But as a political thriller, The Girls on the Bus is mostly a crock of shit. It comes together as something that's not really a guilty pleasure, but definitely one where you have to wade through eye-rolling moments to get to the bits which are enjoyable. That is a sentence desperately trying to be complimentary and I think it failed. <laughs> if the former causes you to check out and miss the latter, you won't make it past the pilot. Wait, this had a pilot? I watched episode one, but I didn't know it was, I thought it got a full season order. As I don't know who could watch that as a pilot and think, yes, I need to give you more money. Me? I was genuinely amused and irritated all at once. Oh, we might get on then. I was wetting myself. Well, at the same time, thinking this was a horrific TV show. <laughs> Sadie aspires to deeply personal, semi-gonzo jerk. No, it's full gonzo. Especially after she went viral in 2020 for crying after her favorite candidate lost. <laughs> The show keeps bringing that up as well. <laughs> you wanted her to win. It showed on television. I mean, you, your crying became a meme. But honestly, after you've heard her talk for a while, you would be grateful that anything she likes lost. Part of me was wondering if it was a more straightforward adaptation of the book, would anybody make that show? After seeing this, I'm amazed anyone made this one. I could graft six cadaver arms onto my pal Alan, but that wouldn't make him an octopus. That's the kind of sentence in a review you have to read twice and then slowly begin to wonder if you've gone insane finally. <laughs> was watching this show the one that broke me or did he actually type that? And telling me that by the end of the season, her pals are going to be on the run from the FBI doesn't make the girls on the bus a parody. Thriller. Every aspect of the thriller plot, which escalates so much by the 10th and f it's got 10 episodes! You would have been scammed if you'd given it six. All that's left is derivative and unconvincing. There are enough silly moments in the finale that I find it hard to believe the writers were finding it convincing anymore. E they'd given up. The Ho Hollywood Reporter's review is meh. The writers clearly didn't give a crap about their own finale either. <laughs> Unfortunately, the finale sets in motion a potential second season. Equally unfortunately, I'm curious enough that I would watch that second season just to find out how things progress. They're like, this show is so ass. I'd have to find out how much more bizarre it can get. Maybe that explains one of the Rotten Tomatoes reviews. It's already got my vote for one of my favorite shows of the year in Collider. Let's hope the network decides to give it a second term. Everyone needs to get to work on a second season as soon as possible. Benoist, as in Supergirl, is the kind of heroine who makes you yell, stop doing dumb things at the screen. But she also spends a lot of time yelling, stop doing dumb things at herself. So she knows, just goes to show you the difference there between a heroine and a hero. What of them strong and self-sacrificial there to help everybody and save them from dangers. The other one yells, stop doing dumb things at themselves. No wonder all those Disney movies are failing. <laughs> the show is intended for an audience that needs most journalistic terminology defined in the dialogue. Are you calling the target audience of the girls on the bus stupid? I'd probably agree with you, I'm just asking. The girls on the bus is able to throw in topical discussions such as murder or inequalities in media. You can understand why the show's a laugh a minute and that makes up for the cheesy romance 
romance, clunky drama, and predictable twists and turns. Now, The Girls on the Bus is everything that I expected it to be, but not the reviews. It just doesn't have the heft to take on its complex issues. This isn't what we need. We need something smarter, a bit more obvious, more like a hammer to the face. What they wanted as a comedy was just essentially a hit piece. They didn't want something full of jokes that were actually funny. They wanted to laugh and clap at somebody else being humiliated that they didn't like. And while this show, from what I've seen in episode one, definitely tries for that, it does try and do other things. And it's the other things they're not happy with. Which is why their reviews are so weird when they're complaining, well, the problem with this show is it takes out all the real life stuff in their fantasy universe. And I can't help wondering that this is a case of where they're like, well, we don't actually like it. But if you actually gave them what they want, if you rewrote it so that all it did was just bang on about real life all the time, not only would you scare off the audience that you currently have, which I have a feeling is about five people, but I think you'd actually end up with even worse reviews than you've got now, with maybe even less of them. Because this show does have a very soap opera feel, which means it could actually have some kind of audience. It's just not aimed at me. Well, not deliberately. But there are moments in their show which are so absurd, I just enjoyed watching the car crash happen in real time in slow motion. The soap opera bits, I could take it or leave it, but every time they came out and started trying to pander to these kind of critics' reviews and what they wanted. The show was so absurd, it was funny. For all the wrong reasons. <laughs> so I have to say, I only watched it to make this video, but after this is over, I am gonna watch episode two. Although I wouldn't be stupid enough to recommend it to anybody else. But those are just my thoughts, what are yours? Let me know down in the comments below, like the video if you liked the video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.